Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and I'm focused on spreading magic by discussing Disney. And today I'm gonna to be looking back through everything we know about Elsa and Anna's grandfather. We are gonna look at how Arendelle attempted to transform into an empire by King Runard. And of course, if you are new here and you'd like to join this community of wonderful Disney lovers, then consider subscribing. And if you'd like to talk about this evil king more, hang out with me and probably play some video games too. I'm beginning to stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday, which will be linked down below. I think we'll have a lot of fun over there, so I hope you can come and check it out. King Runard was born into the royal family of Arendelle, who inevitably ascended to the throne after his parents. With a focus to expand his own power, he became a ruler who desired to expand his kingdom to allow it to become a dominant power within the world. In fact, it's possible that he might have felt threatened by the growing power of neighboring kingdoms like the Southern Isles and Wesselton, and wanted to have Arendelle rise above them. Do you think he was compensating for something? <laughs> That's not appropriate. In Frozen Forest of Shadows, we learn after being crowned as king, one of Runard's first acts was to build Arendelle's beautiful, elegant, and formidable castle. This massive structure was carefully designed with many ornate details, lavish rooms, prominent art, and enough space to welcome the entire kingdom. It was a work of art that showcased Arendelle's culture, riches, and pride, and began Runard's mission to grow Arendelle's influence. It's possible that he was very welcoming to his people, like his son would one day be after the construction of the castle was finished. He might have opened up the gates to citizens for balls, holidays, and times of celebrations. This would have surely strengthened the love his people had for him and their pride in their country. At the same time though, with the castle in the defensive position to protect the harbor with walls surrounding the kingdom, Runard was establishing Arendelle as a nation that would not allow enemies into his home, or anyone for that matter. The king was putting his home on the front lines of any attack that could ever come their way, seeming to imply that he was ready to take on anyone who would oppose his rule, and that would be proven when Runard was confronted with the Northaldra in the Enchanted Forest. Once Runard discovered this mysterious tribe who was deeply connected with the most powerful spirits that existed, he became threatened by their different way of life and the power that he feared they could use against him. Publicly though, King Runard welcomed them to Arendelle with each of the leaders promising the other peace. But in truth, Runard plotted their undoing. Under the veil of honoring their friendship, Arendelle's people constructed a mighty dam under the lie that it would strengthen their waters, even though Runard knew it would weaken their lands. You see, the dam will weaken their lands, so they will have to turn to me. He was completely lying to them for no reason other than his own selfishness. While Runard was plotting Arendelle's expansion and the downfall of the Northaldra, at some point he also married Queen Rita and had a son named Agnar. Early into Prince Agnar's life, the noble and respected Lieutenant Matthias was appointed as his official guard. King Runard may have been a totalitarian ruler who was conducting his reign with fear in his heart, but to his son he appeared to be a generous, noble, and compassionate person. Agnar seemed to internalize a lot of the best aspects of Runard that he was actually just putting up as a front. Eventually, Agnar would become the person that Runard pretended to be. Arendelle appeared to be a kingdom that was willing to support others and look beyond themselves, but everyone was being deceived. Especially after his wife Rita died soon after Agnar's birth due to sickness, I'm sure this left the king without anyone who could see through his deception and speak to him about the path that he was going down. Runard only had longing for power, his insecurities, and his fears guiding him. The North Uldra follow magic, which means we can never trust them. Magic makes people feel too powerful. King Renard got to the point where he became a man who was unwilling to trust anyone who would follow magic. In his mind, magic made people feel too powerful and entitled, and was especially concerned that they would defy his will as king. While his supporters believed in him, he was someone who was untrustworthy of those he did not understand, and deemed as villains, which is absolutely wrong. He didn't seek any way to coexist or thrive together. Runard didn't want to figure out a way for his neighbors in Arendelle to come together. He only could focus on seeing them as the enemy, which would eventually lead to his undoing as all hateful rulers should eventually find. 
dividing people is not a tactic that can work forever. When the dam was fully constructed, Runard ordered the entirety of Arendelle's guard to march to the Enchanted Forest while telling the Northaldra that they were coming to honor the peace offering. Even Runard's own men questioned this decision knowing that the Northaldra had given them no reason to not trust them. But the king had already decided what would happen on that journey. While the Arendellians, including Agnar, were mystified by the magic that they saw, their leader was present to witness the Northaldra's true strength and numbers so that he could finally feel confident to take them down with Arendelle's army. A brief conversation occurred with the Northaldra's leader over his concern over the dam's effects on the forest, but when that man turned his back on Renard, Arendelle's king struck him down, causing a brutal battle to take place. While Prince Agnar had been honored to travel with his father to the Enchanted Forest, being on this expedition also meant that he had to see many lives lost on both sides of the conflict, including the life of his father. After striking down the Northaldra leader, another member of the tribe fought King Runard and took him down with him off of the cliff to his death. This battle enraged the spirits of the Enchanted Forest, causing a curse to fall across the forest for 35 years. All of the Arendellian soldiers and the Northaldra people were trapped, and everyone else was kept out of the woods. The once thriving and magical place was left dormant with only two people able to escape. King Runard's son, Agnar, was able to return to Arendelle along with the Northaldra girl who had saved his life named Aduna. Years later, King Agnar and Queen Aduna would be married and have two children together. And these daughters, Elsa and Anna, would right the wrongs that their grandfather had caused. King Runard spent his life desiring order, control, and complete obedience, but those true values and desires betrayed everything Arendelle stood for. He had hoped to build Arendelle into an unstoppable empire that would be unable to be toppled and would be able to overwhelm any enemy that came their way. But all these divisive, selfish, and prideful goals would lead to his own downfall and would destroy his legacy. But let me know down below what your thoughts and theories are surrounding the life of King Runard. Also make sure to subscribe and click the beautiful bell and then click on another magical video in the description or on the screen. Finally, as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.